Oh! Okay! Alright, hey everybody. Uh, when, the, when the stream started, I saw a red light on my monitor. And, um... That, of course, is bad news for a broadcast. But, it's green now. Hang tight, everybody. Making a few little technical settings here. Gonna see if I can um, smooth this out a little bit. Randy Kovac became a bronze ox. Thank you, Randy Kovac. I mean, it looks good. All right, well, I'm not going to fiddle with it as long as it's working. I'll revisit that if it starts to go down. Happy Monday, everybody. Good to see everyone today. Toby Noble on Facebook. We've got Melting Mars and Hungry Potato Chips on Twitch. We are live on Kick, and of course, it's great to see all of the regulars and the members on YouTube today. Alt Grendel, Cat5, Slatty Bartfast, Rusty, Levartation, Brett Bills, Randy Kovac became a Bronze Ox. Thank you, Randy Kovac. Shininator, John Washburn, Elliot, and more. Elena Sherwood on Facebook says, It's so late for me. Boo! Won't be able to stick around too long. I'm sorry to hear that, Elena. I am having a bit of a late start today. But I think uh, I'll still be able to get a nice good broadcast in. Hungry Potato Chips says, Ox, I'm watching this in school. Okay. Well, just don't get in trouble, you know. Stan518 says, Have you seen the Fallout show? It's so catching. Um, it is rather catching, isn't it? Yes, I have seen the Fallout show, and I am uh, occupied in producing content about it. So, <clears throat> I may need to make this broadcast shorter than uh, usual in order to allow myself more time to work on my Fallout show lore content than I'm currently uh, working on. But we'll see how it goes when we get into the game. Deathica says, my body is ready. Let's go. Your body? Are you watching this with your whole body? Do you mean your eyes, maybe? And your mind? But no, your body is ready. Okay. I guess we're jazzercising to Oxhorn today. Cool. I'm down for that. Uh, Toby Noble says, do my comments not show up? They do show up. Good to see you, Toby. Alt Grendel says, uh, the music's kind of loud. Yeah, it's, it's that song. I feel like I'm constantly having to adjust the, um, the volume because it's really, really low, and then it goes really, really loud, and then it's really, really low, and then it's really, really loud. And it's stupid. All right, let's uh, continue with the game. Loading now. She's all right by me. Okay. Let's get out of here. Let's see. 
All right, so we got a blocked path. We need a tool to unblock that. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's do this from a quest-based solution. Uh, this is the embassy. That's the primary quest. We already did the optional objectives for it. Uh, side quests, we've got uh, bristlebacks unhold until the embassy has been completed. Okay. Leaving just the Twilight Path. And we do have two errands. Melee pits. Uh... Okay, yeah, I don't want to do either of those two things. And those are upgrades. So, let's do the Twilight Path. Chininator says, Ox, I'm drinking an old-fashioned today. What are you drinking? Uh, well, I'm out of coffee. I'm waiting on a new bag of beans to arrive. So I'm just drinking a Coke. Just drinking a Coke this morning. Jorge Oliveira says, uh, An all-time favorite YouTuber slash streamer and an all-time favorite game. It ain't even my birthday yet. <laughs> well, uh, I'm flattered, and it's good to know that you like the game as well as you do. I've been really enjoying it so far. James Eckenrode says, Happy Monday, Ox. Looking forward to your show. Thank you. I'm looking forward to Scotch and Smoke Rings as well. I'm sure there will be lots of questions. Okay. Now. So we need to go up there for the tw Twilight Path. Machine strike beginner. Okay, so those are the, the little errands. Uh, I don't want to fight people in the pit, and I don't want to play the little card mini games. So we're going to go right up here to the Twilight Path. We've got a couple of unknowns along the way. And a place where we can get squirrel hide. Back to work, Savior. Bringing back pints is a whole lot nicer after a hard day's sleep. setting on my on my bow Oh, fire hunter bow, fire hunter arrows. Oh wow. Okay, we're full of ammo. But I lost the boar. Oh well. I think I needed a squirrel anyway. this at the base here we've got a zip line or a gondola 
Well, we need to go up the mountain. Is this gonna be faster? Ah, uh, that's just gonna be our way down, looks like. Oh, that's an old uh, minecart track. Whoa. Well, something happened here. That way to Baron Light, I need to go there for the primary plot, but I want to explore this ruin real quick. So it's either a roller coaster, which doesn't make much sense. More likely it's gonna be from minecarts. Yeah, this is where they would come in and stop here and then unload. Oh yeah, okay, they're showing us exactly. But uh, the tracks are broken. What happens if we continue up? Missy! Hold on. Is there something in there? Any luck? No. Hey! Well, could you stop shouting? Jeez. Guess I have to take the road up there to explore that. I was hoping I could climb up. Whoa! Do they all have the same voice? Or is it that one guy that's been hollering the entire time? Julian Z says, hi Ox, good to see you. Loved your TV show vid, so great. Thank you. I've got welcome, a lot Alan. more that I'm working on right now. Uh, my next one is going to be my actual review of the show. Red Hue Quarry. All right. So it's a, uh, a stone quarry for construction materials. The track is broken. How are they going to get all this stuff down if the track is broken? Data point on green shine. My research regarding the crystals has been more successful than anticipated. I've made significant progress in the quest to learn what green shine is and thus where it can be found. The, uh, through the process of elimination, I can now state that green shine is not formed within rock but on its surface. The quarry and nearby mine have given me ample evidence to support this conclusion. 
The notion that green shine is formed through the application of intense pressure or temperature can therefore be discarded. Additionally, I've gathered sufficient proof to denounce the religious idiocy, or I'm sorry, idiocy, that green shine is a gift of the sun and somehow springs into existence via green twilight flares. Rather, entire clusters of green shine can be found in locales the sun cannot reach, such as underground caverns. It is therefore safe to assume that sunlight is no factor in its formation. Therefore, uh, there does appear to be a correlation between green shine deposits and machine presence, however. The hypothesis that the crystal is formed as a side effect of canister leakage seems ever more alluring. The local Osram stone workers seem to agree. They believe green shine to be a hardened state of blaze, a substance that I must admit has similar visual properties. Next step, devise an experiment whereby I attempt to transform blaze into green shine through artificial means. Note to self, acquire fireproof armor before testing begins. <laughs> so, green shine comes from blaze. Oh, this is my stash. All right. Ah, finally! Been busy now, but we'll talk soon! Oh, hi! I can't tell who they're yelling at. Are they yelling at each other or at me? Because I'm not trying to talk to anybody right now. Alright, now I am. I've got a hunter here selling uh, blast traps. Resources. Do I need any of these resources? Charger Horn and Scrounger Spark Coil. Fully upgraded. Full on traps. Ah. Do I have this one? Cleanse Potion. Here's all elements and status effects. I need medicinal berry and rich meat. Well, I have both of those things. I've got 10 of the rich meat. Can I not craft it? Not enough room in my potion pouch. I see. I can only hold three potions and they're full of the health potions. Pouch upgrades, food, I need fox hide for that. Squirrel hide, a J feather, J wishbone. I've got that one. Oh. Squirrel bone, vulture feather, and raccoon hide. All right, I'll create jobs for the ones I need. Here we go. Okay, so I don't think I need any of those charger horns or what's it? God, they have the same dialogue over and over again. Okay, let's get out of here before we get chatted to death. Uh, Deathica says, I recently saw you featured in Guerrilla Games' January 2021 Community Spotlight YouTube video. You'd just seen a Scorcher for the first time. Really? Well, they didn't bother to tell me. Uh, cool. So, but wait, that was back in 2021 when I played Horizon uh, Zero Dawn for the first time. Oh, that's cool. Wish I would have known about that back in 2021. <laughs> okay, well, that's the quarry. 
merchants up top, and a couple of different ways to get up there. But that's where I left my mount. That's not Can't be. And we need to go up that road. Can. All right, left goes to Split Crag. Right goes to the, well, the Forsaken Place. Have we been to Split Crag? I think we might have because it's green. Yeah, all right, so we need to go right. Shadow, Barjar, take it up. These people are under attack. Hey! You up there! Aren't you gonna help? Not my job. I'm just here to keep an eye on this. to me and exploded. I think the thing that I shot at it exploded and killed me in one hit. on their way.
Get to safety. I'll handle the rest. I'll help the Nora. I like this thing. Check on the refugees. Guess the show's over. <laughs> okay, talk to the refugees. Wassum says, where's the cigar? Oh, you're right. I knew I forgot something. strong color out of this. Yeah. All right, I got all the loot. Drink. Right, let's uh, talk to these poor refugees. Still. You defended the order bravely. Easy now. Oh. Is it bad, Lokasha? Shh, now. Everything will be fine. Is everyone okay? Bruised, but not buried. Our order will live to see another day. Are you sure about that? We're no strangers to hardship, Nora. We've crossed half the Sundom with no more than the clothes on our backs. And as soon as our Sun Priest returns, our path will be clear. For now, we wait. Well, you're better off waiting somewhere else. Your people need shelter. There's a town east of- Chainscrape. Yes. We know of it. Savohar says it's not suitable for us. Who? Our Sun Priest. Our order has made it this far, thanks to his guiding light. Okay, and where is this Savohar? He went up to the tower to meditate three days ago, and he won't come down until the sun shows him the way to our new home. The fallen storm bird is an omen, he said. And of course, it must be. It, it I must. see. Yeah. And how long do you plan on waiting for him? Until he returns. He will return. He must. Right, well this is like Moses taking a pit stop to go get the Ten Commandments from God. <laughs> You're Shadow Karja, aren't you? We are the Order of Twilight. The difference being... When the Usurper Avad killed his father, we fled with the Karja in shadow to Sunfall. Our lives there were difficult. Savohar saw our misery, lifted us up, protected us from the corrupt priests and heartless kestrels. When their rule ended, Savohar led us from the Shadowlands. The long night ends, 
and the setting sun will lead us to salvation, he said. And so he named us the Order of Twilight. We journeyed west in search of a better life. Why didn't you go back to Meridian? A bard is a patricide. We will not kneel to the likes of him. We must walk in twilight to our new home. Savohar will lead us there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Martin Suspregi gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you, Martin, and congratulations to Russell, Nick93, Joseph Wolf, Old Man Gamer, Hugh Jass. I feel like you're constantly getting memberships, Hugh Jass, because I say your name a lot. And uh, Menta Ray Travels says, good afternoon, Ox, and everyone else. I had a happy childhood. My dad used to put me in tires and roll me down the hills. Those were the good years. I feel like you could also make a good Pridwin joke out of that. No? Good, good year blimp? Something? I just don't have the creativity to make one up right now. Thank you, Manterbay Travels and Martin. There's an Oseram in Chainscrape. Tolland. He wants the Stormbird up there. Yes. He was here just yesterday. A very unpleasant man, even by Osaram standards. He made all manner of threats. But we will not be intimidated. That's all well and good, but he's got friends. Sooner or later, his whole gang will show up. Sabohar will come through. He always does. We just need to give him more time. You're out of time, Lakasha. You need to consider packing up and- We won't leave him. And we won't let others disrupt his meditation. Oh. Well, they're going to try. Your priest, Savohar. You said he's been up there three days? His meditation can't be rushed. So he does this often? Meditating for days on end? Well, it doesn't usually take this long. But he will guide us through. He always has. We have faith. Sure, but shelter looks like a more pressing concern. I swear in these games, like half the time we're just doing quests that they were too lazy to do themselves. Okay, so he's been up there for three days and you, you didn't bother to just check on him. I mean, no one's asking you to disrupt his meditation or anything, but maybe just peek at him, make sure he's not dead, you know, from exposure or storm birds. Guess I'll do it. Look at yourselves. Those machines nearly wiped you out. And Osram thugs are watching you, just waiting to strike. You're in danger here. You need to grab Savohar and get out. Our situation. This is the worst we've endured. I know we cannot stay here, but without Sabohar to guide us, I, I don't... Let me up there, and I'll convince him it's time to move on. But his meditation. If he hasn't received his vision, he won't follow. At least let me check on him. If he's been up there for days. Yes. Yes, that is sensible, I suppose. Yeah. Please, be careful. The trail up to the tower is falling apart. Savohar is strong, but it could not have been an easy climb. It rarely is. Let the Nora pass. Chasing Dopamine became a bronze ox. Thank you so much, Chasing Dopamine. All right, now to steal from these for survivors. I'm gonna loot all their boxes. Oh yeah, that is mine too. It's all right, I'm about to go do you a favor. I'm gonna climb that tower because you guys don't want to, just to make sure your guy isn't dead. Mm. Nura became a bronze ox. Thank you, Nura. Okay, well. That is a long climb. Let's start it. But 
Always check behind the waterfall in a video game. I don't make the rules, I just follow them. This time there's nothing there. Looks like I should head up. Some ladders can now be unlocked by what? Hold on, a, a tooltip popped up, but it stayed on the screen for like 0.3 seconds. So, I don't know what it said. That down now I can't kick it down oh is this what the tooltip was trying to tell me about well I wish I could read it do I shoot it do I grapple it Okay, thank you, tooltip. That didn't stay long enough for me to read it. She was right. The trail's in bad shape. This looks recent. Must have broken off when Savohar climbed up here. Right, well, we're not climbing up that way. I wonder if we can try, though. <laughs> Rising? Yeah, all right, we did it. Cool. I think I can reach those beams if I jump against the cliff. Jump against the surface, then tap left control to perform a wall jump. left control. Okay, so that's working. That way. Useful for making dyes. Okay, now how to climb higher? Well, I see it there. I was just wondering about this gap over there looking for loot. Must have broken off after Savahar passed through. I need to find another way up. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be a bit too high, I think. Maybe. No. Ooh, yeah, we could go over there. Let's see what's over here first. I don't want to miss any loot. 
Ready. With this green shine will fetch a price. Green shine. to make the jump to the other side. getting over the bridge. It's not looking good. It looks like he left a trail. I can follow with my focus. There's the Stormbird. Getting closer. Where's this? Oh, I see it, yeah. Is that it? Is that the Stormbird? Huh. It doesn't look like a machine, it looks kind of like a, a craft. What a look steep enough down below. Could be a quick way down. Then I'd lose all the loot. Machines. Savahar must have snuck past them. I could probably slip past them. Or take them out. This is going to be our way down after we find Savoar. 
Okay, I think I'm in the clear. Our Sabo are in pretty bad shape. At least he's still alive. Jeez. Can I give him a stim pack? The true sun above me. The true sun before me. Show me the way this even tide. <coughs> The true sun above me. You must be Savahar. The true sun before me. Show me the way this even tide. <laughs> oh. Oh. The vessel must be empty for the coming vision. You don't need a vision. You need medical attention. On the way up, I saw parts of the trail had given way. Is that how you hurt yourself? My pain. All part of the ritual. You're hurt bad. And your people are running out of time. Staring at the Stormbird isn't solving anything. You don't understand the omen. It fell here at the beacon. I just need to see the twilight path. My people will find their home. Listen, Makasha is doing the best she can down there, but machine attacks, angry Osiram. The Order is scared, Savar. The last rays of even time. Will burn away their fear. I don't think so. What do you think's gonna happen here? If you sit long enough, the sun will show you something? A path to a new home. The fallen machine can only mean that the storm has passed. <laughs> Salvation is at hand. Or some Osram shot it and it hit an old tower. She's turning into a grumpy old man. <laughs> I love it. Look, I think you punctured a lung. You can't heal it with prayer. The sun will provide. <laughs> And I will not lose faith. I'd be more concerned about losing blood. Your people are worried about you. They need shelter, security. The true sun above me. The true sun before me. Show me the way this even time. I think you've been staring at your salvation this whole time. The true sun above me. Gotta get over to that storm bird. Grab its heart. Do I? Okay. Be careful not to let this stain my hands. That's an awfully far leap. Oh, I see. Handholds made of... They go all the way around it. Just a fall to the death right there. Yeah, I, I somehow missed that. At least I quick saved, you know? Was it before or after I talked to him? 
It was after. Okay. That's what I was trying to do the first time. A Stormbird heart is valuable. Enough to feed all the refugees waiting below. And his answer is sunstroke in a prayer? Why does every priest I meet think blind faith is the answer to everything? Make an interesting color for my armor. There we go. That was just one death. Oh, wait, no, there was the other one. There was just two deaths. Hope you're not drinking. Yeah, the way back will be easier. Okay. Let's get that Stormbird. Ooh, we got explosive barrels. Are they? Do they still have explosives in them? I guess not. smell. <laughs> Levitation says, yes, we are drinking. Oh, dear. Well... I'll try to not die quite as much as I do during scotch and smoke rings. I am getting all the rare flowers. Okay, a path down there, which just leads back. The Osram that was watching the refugees probably went to get Tolland. I gotta get them out of here before he comes back. The Order should be able to afford shelter with this heart. Some food and a change of clothes wouldn't hurt either. That's for them, and this is for me. A lens. Guess I'll figure out what to do with it later. Yeah, I've, I've collected like three of those so far. She has no idea what they're for. <laughs> Savahar? How you holding up? I need to get back over there. Hmm. This'll make a good die. Savahar? I guess you did the best you could. Rest easy now. I'll make sure your people are safe. 
I should let Lakasha know. And give her the Stormbird Heart. I guess you did the best you could. Sitting in one spot for three days and slowly dying, that was the best he could. Well, poor guy. So is she just gonna take our word for it? I guess we don't need to bring evidence that he's died. Now we could do the fast way down, but there is this complex over here that uh, I'm curious about. There's also that question mark over there, unknown. Oh, this is where I just came from. Okay, that's the bridge. That's not down there. All right, so this is what I want to get. I want to get that unknown. But that's really close to this. Maybe I should just turn this in and then go back and get that. Rusty says, uh, goodbye, Ox and chat. I'm going to play some more Fallout 3. Just got it in the Steam sale. All right, my friend. You'll enjoy yourself, I know. I wonder how how good Fallout sales are doing after the show. I bet there's an uptick. Like, I bet there are people discovering Fallout for the first time and uh, playing Fallout 3, Fallout 4, Fallout 76 for the first time. This has got to be really good for them. <laughs> Jackalwise says, uh, Oxhorn just had to get that die before saving him. Hey, I've got my priorities, right? No. Uh-oh, did I hear an Osram down there? Okay, well, let me get this question mark first. Ain't gonna win this. That Stormbird belongs to the boss. We will not yield. All right, I should be right by it. Up in there, maybe? Yeah. Look at that. We've got a ruin up there. No, 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 no. That's the that's the path I walked up to get up there. Yeah, that's the ledge over there. Okay, so that's not it. Maybe it's in the hillside there? There's Talland with his thugs. You think those machines were tough? Try getting into a fist fight with us. Nick all the threats you want. The path is closed. I, I will be back there. I'm just looking to see if I can find it. Huh. Droid Noises says, bought all the Fallout games. I've only beat New Vegas before. Got any recommendations for where to start? Ah... Uh, I guess Fallout 3. 
Fallout 3 has very similar game mechanics to Fallout New Vegas, so you should be familiar with it. It's a little bit clunkier than Fallout New Vegas, but it's very similar since it's based on the same, well, the same version of the same engine. Fallouts 1 and 2 are great games, but they're very dated, and they're not necessarily everyone's game style, especially if you're expecting a Bethesda game. So, it's worth a try, especially if you're playing it alongside a guy. Or you can watch my series on Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 and play along with them. Uh, but yeah, Fallout 3 is a great place to start because it's going to help you understand the story of Fallout 4 a little bit more. But it's not necessary. You can play Fallout 4 without having played Fallout 3. And Fallout 4 is a lovely game. I'm a generous gent. So I'll give you one more chance to make it easy on yourselves and clear out. We won't let you pass, Asaram. If you choose bloodshed, that's on your conscience. Ain't it just like the cards you to make things harder than they have to be? Okay, boys. You heard her. Get your consciences ready. Hold on now, Tolland. You again? Listen, I'm all out of patience here. I clipped that Stormbird's wings. The salvage is mine. I don't care who gets in my way. Nora Savages or Shadow Cars or Fleabags. I'm taking it. You'll have to go through me, Tough Break, or Finders Keepers. How is Tough Break the empathetic response? Let's try that. Okay, so you clipped a Stormbird. But it's brought you nothing but trouble since. Refugees, squabbles, me. Might be hard to swallow, but it's time to cut your losses, don't you think? Come on, boss. It's not worth it. Okay. You win. Okay. Hey, I'm doing fine. I don't need that salvage anyhow. <laughs> but these people need all the help they can get. Come on, boys. Back to chain scrape. I need a drink. I didn't want it anyway. Stupid Stormbird. Man. Aloy, again, we thank you. You're welcome. Now take this heart. Use it to buy food, clothes, shelter for your people. Maybe even land to build a new home. I... This is... Savalhar must make these decisions. No, I'm... I'm sorry, Lakasha. Savahar isn't coming back. He's gone. I know it's hard. But your people need a leader now. Go to Chainscrape. Talk to the Forge woman there, Petra. Give her the Stormbird Heart. She'll look after you and your people until you can get back on your feet. Find your path. I'll do my best, Aloy. What choice do I have? Here, please accept this. It is modest, but I hope it helps in some small way. To chain scrape, then. What I get? What I get? Rich meat, squirrel hide, a jay wishbone. Hey, cool! A lot of the stuff I needed to do all of my crafting. Uh, okay, so chat is saying that I missed some super chats. I'm so sorry. Uh, let me scroll up here, uh, see what I missed. Uh, yeah, Gianna says, hey, Ox, did the creators of the Fallout show uh, say that the Fallout show is canon? Because I thought they said it wasn't going to be. No spoilers for those who hadn't seen it. It, it is. Yeah, they, they came out and said that it is canon. Uh, in fact, uh, Todd Howard came out and said so much as to say, if you were looking for the next chapter in the installment of the Fallout franchise or the Fallout story, this show is it. So they're, they're, they're going all in on this show. They're fully embracing it. And it is canonical. It's not an alternative timeline. It's canonical. Levartation says, yes, we're drinking. All right, okay, that's where I went back. And then Gianna says that I missed the super chat. Again, sorry about that. Rusty says, uh, and I saw that one as well. Wow, how did I miss that? It just flew right by. Uh, 
Jungle Hunter gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you, Jungle Hunter, and congratulations to Clull Biggs, Best Truder, Random Grey Mane, Mark Fogarty, and Grant Haber. Yeah, and then lever uh, thanks to everybody who, who told me about missing the super chat. My bad. Jackal Wise says, Aloy, he's dead. It's just me. Don't go look. Yeah, just believe me, she says. Cool, well now I can make, uh, I can make my upgrades. And I've got skill points to spend. Okay, uh, skills. Let's see, I have been going all in on a hunter and infiltrator. Increase the effectiveness of healing and potions and gain benefits while in low health. Includes weapon techniques for blast slings and shredder gauntlets. Machine Master, increase the effectiveness of overriding machines and the durability and damage dealt from overridden machines. Includes weapon techniques for spike throwers, which excel against large machines. Yeah, I do like the spike thrower. Now this is going to improve my trip casters and rope casters. I'm still tempted to continue going down this tree, however. We unlocked one. And we've got two more, right? Uh... High volley. I don't know if I would ever use that, though. That's the thing. Bolt blaster fire eight bolts in a wide short range spread. Uh, the thing is, I want that. But to get that, I'm going to have to unlock quite a few more of these, aren't I? One, two, three. One, two. So wait, I could just do that, right? Stamina regen. Recover weapon stamina faster. To use a weapon technique, aim. Okay. Let's try this. Okay, but that didn't unlock that. I'd have to get that and that to unlock that. So to fully get that, I've got to get all of this. This one now untagged. Learned, 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 learned. Level three. Okay, so there's a dot missing here now, even though I've learned all of this. Gotta say, I don't think I like their uh, their skill tree, the, the layout of it in, in this new game. It's a little confusing, but oh well. Right, well, I think that's going to be all for Hunter now. I think I'll move on to a different skill after this. Weapon techniques are unique, powerful attacks that offer exceptional new strategies in combat. Unlocked techniques are available for all weapons in their class. Tap or hold the middle mouse button while aiming to use your selected technique. Using a weapon technique depletes your weapon stamina, which regenerates over time. Switch between available weapon techniques to your, for your current weapon by opening the weapon wheel F and tapping Z or X.
Looks like I only have one available. All right, middle mouse button for a weapon technique. Ah, okay. Okay, that could be cool. I like that. Who knows, maybe I will use that. Okay, we were trying to figure out this um, unknown. It's below me. Okay, well that explains why I didn't see it. So it's through here. Let's see. If we can get to it from over here. Oh, got all the wood. Wood, 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 wood. Oh, look at all that wood. Ah, I see what you're hiding over here. Yeah, we can get it without falling into the water. Ah! Hello, what is this? Okay! Watery, oh man, I'm gonna die. Rebreather. Jackal Wise says it was my birthday a couple of days ago. I'm now 25, and I got to spend my day watching you play Horizon and eating chocolate cake. It was a good day. <laughs> that's that sounds like a good day. Man, I wish I had some chocolate cake right now. Oh, that's great, Jackal Wise. Happy birthday. Go, 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 go faster. Faster, faster, don't die. Don't die. Oh, but it's blue. I gotta get it. It's blue. Oh, but it's green. I gotta get it. It's green. Okay, go back. Back. Back, 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 back. We got all the loot. Up, 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 up. Wait a minute. 
Was there a box down there? I could have sworn I saw a box down there. Ancient valuables box. Oh my god. Rock barrier. Loosely piled rocks obstructing access can be cleared with prying force. Stuck on stalagmites. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Squeeze through the crack. Ha ha ha! This is gonna give me a kill! Oh, I'm gonna die! Find a bubble! Find an air bubble! Up we go! Yes! Oh, there's an air bubble, but I gotta get it. Ooh. Oh, what have I done? How am I gonna get out of here? God, I hate swimming. I don't have the required equipment to swim deep enough to progress. Well, that's just bullcrap. No, 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 no. Oh, stop! Just, ah! Uh. God, swimming is awful in this game. Ha, ha, ha. Never mind. Yeah, I'll wait to swim until I've got a rebreather or something. Matt Rowland says, listening to you while in school, in the school pickup line, it's mid-April. How do some of these parents still not know what to do? Shakes fist. Oh man, I don't understand. I mean, I am a parent, so I should understand. But I don't understand how those parents act. Those, those crazy parents. here squirrel bone I should go craft my pouches shouldn't I I've got a stash and a workbench over here perfect There. Ignoring me again. Oh, back to NPC chat.
Oh, he's got an exclamation point. Why? Uh, I don't know why. No trade? Oh, well. Pouch upgrades. I couldn't hide. Yay, I can do the arrow upgrade. Now I need rabbit hide. Still need a squirrel bone, horned lizard bone, a goose feather. I can do that upgrade. Vulture feather, J feather, and fox hide. Okay. Next time. Wait a minute, we got potions. I didn't use any potions. I didn't use any traps. Okay, we're good. Give it a rest, would you? Boy, slash. No! I'm trying to drop. Okay. <clears throat> right through there. for the Forbidden West. And Karja Horn. That means the embassy is starting soon. All right, I should find whoever's in charge here. First, I could resupply my stash. Might be worth taking a look around, too. Is that the savior of Meridian? Can we have a word? Ah, uh, Savior, <laughs> tell me, are you seeking passage into no man's land by any chance? Maybe. Why do you ask? Ah, well, to hammer it plain, there's treasure out west. Unclaimed scrap and ancient metal. And I've got a sturdy band of salvagers that knows the lay of the land. You're not afraid of the Tanakh? <laughs> Terrified. But I carry out most of my business in no man's land. A neutral territory and all that. Baron Light is our port of entry. When its doors aren't closed for an embassy. Uh, I was hoping your arrival meant they might be opening soon. I've got a business to run, after all. I want that embassy to happen as much as you do. Believe me, I'm working on it. <laughs> Good to know. And uh, keep us in mind. If you do manage to open the way, our main camp will be just past Baron Light. We'll buy any scrap you've got on you. And if you're looking for machine parts, we've got the best in the West. Guaranteed. All right. Maybe later, then. Uh, if you could get those blasted gates open. <laughs> right. Guess I'm not the only one who wants to get those gates open. Salvage Contracts, Karuf's Salvage Unlimited. A group of Osram has set up a salvage operation in the Forbidden West. Their camp is a must stop for discerning hunters looking for trade. Oh man, mini games. 
I don't play games to play games within my games. I play games to play games. God. Let's trade. Remedies for shards. Herbalist. Oh, okay. Hey! I can buy them. That'll definitely save me time, but I've only got 500 caps for shards, 500 shards. Do I really buy them with my meager 500 shards? Ugh. Are you no. sure? Last chance to stock up. I mean, I can always come back. It would work well in armor. Yeah. Card your armor to protect and Have to play. What's it got? The Osirum Explorer set. The Nora Huntress set. I believe that's what I have. Nora Sentinel. That's rare. That's better than my Nora Anointed set. Wow, and when maxed out, that's significantly better. So that's what I want. 399 plus a Sky Drifter Circulator. Well, I can afford it from the shards perspective, but I need a Sky Drifter Circulator. I am always open to trade. Oh. Itaman's Shadow Captured. When I read that Itaman's shadow had been captured, I asked myself, where was his honor? Did he sacrifice himself in battle? Did he give his blood in shame? No, he let himself be taken alive. On top of that, the Sun King took mercy on him, the very same traitor who kidnapped his half-brother during the liberation of Meridian. From Avad's pronouncement, the rift between Raya's, known as Idaman's shadow, and his brother Urid, the Arrow of the Sun, is the same wound that afflicts all families cleft by the Civil War. And such injuries must be healed if the Sundom is to move forward. So Raya's lives on, albeit locked in a cell in Sunstone Rock for the rest of his days. Avad is a good man, but far too kind. I cannot prove blameless Murad's part in this, but he must be involved. The stay of execution reeks of politics. A bone thrown to noble families with ties to the old regime. Just the kind of craven gesture the spymaster would propose. Now, as shadows pass with the dawn, I can only hope that Rias has forgotten forever. His treachery should earn him nothing. Let him rot in the dark. There's errand. That no broken ribs looks like it. he's had a few. Because that's what pissed in your fridge. Gentlemen. That's our cue. You taking the edge off? Huh. Well, I mean, I'd ask you to join, but you'll be left to save the world, right? All right, now let me guess. You're in a rush, right? So, uh, whatever you need, ask away. This poor guy. He's really taking it hard. 
How have things been since well, I... Your silent departure? <laughs> yeah, not bad. Vanguard's going strong. Helped Avad pick up the pieces after the battle with the Eclipse. And I took a month to bury Ursa in the claim. But when I got back, I got the assignment to babysit Vadis on his way to the embassy. I thought that'd be a cakewalk, so of course things went sideways. You got blindsided. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> a couple more of these, maybe I'll believe you. I was, um, wondering if you were able to lay Ursa to rest, like you wanted. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. Just seen the crowd that showed up to pay their respects. Half of them owed her a favor, and the other half, the other half owed her their lives. In the end, everybody drank. You know, that is the rowdiest funeral since, uh, well, since ever. <laughs> Feels like she would have liked that. Yeah, damn straight. Damn straight. <laughs> she would have put them all under the table. Did I go through all of this before? I don't think I did. This is this is all new. Since we talked with them last. What do you know about the embassy? Oh, you know, not much. Only that Avad really wants it to happen. He said I'm making peace with these Tanakh. But from what I hear, they're not too big on the whole diplomacy thing. They do most of their talking with blades and arrows. So if you're heading their way, be prepared. Things might get ugly real fast. I'll keep that in mind. What do you know about this place? Well, nothing good. It's where the cards had dragged all the captives they took from the Forbidden West during the Red Raids. Lucky ones became slave labor. The rest were hauled off to the Sun Ring and Meridian. Your sacrifice. You got it. Tanakh made sure to wreck the place before they chased the cards out of the West. I can't say I blame them. And now Avad's paying the Osram to rebuild it. No matter how much new stone they put up, it'll still be stained in blood. I, um, I better get going. Oh, uh, yeah, don't let me stop you. Just, uh, are you sure about this? Yeah, I'm saving the world. That's, that sounds like a lot for just one... Errand. Yeah, all right. Can't blame me for trying. I, I guess what I'm really trying to say is, if you ever do need me... I know where to find you. Hopefully sober next time. Jeez. Yeah, don't count on it. Be careful out there, Aloy. She can be real condescending sometimes. <laughs> Some of her writing is just really condescending. Savior, you're my last hope. Conover, she's Meridian Savior, not yours. It's just Aloy. What do you want? Please, no one will listen. But the Eclipse, they're here in the Daunt. Really, Conover? Aloy's the one that defeated them. You're bothering her with this hogwash now? Some of them must have fled west after the battle at the Alight. I saw one of our sentries, Lorovic, sneaking off to meet with one. I tried to eavesdrop, but they spotted me. And then Lorovic tried to kill me. I... Ooh. fought back. It was him or me. Unfortunately, there's no hard evidence that connects Lorovic to the Eclipse. And since Conover doesn't deny killing his fellow soldier, Nozar sentenced him to death. What makes you so sure Lorovic was working with the Eclipse? Well, I was too far to hear everything. But I heard them both say the word Eclipse. It's not the most outlandish claim I've heard, but it's up there. Crying Eclipse is a convenient way to dodge a death sentence. If I have to die, so be it. But if we ignore this threat, others are going to die too. Tell me exactly what happened. Weeks ago, during a shift change, some trespassers slipped through the gate. By the time anyone noticed, they were halfway out the canyon. Nozar didn't see the need to give chase, but
Let the Tanakhs take care of them, he said. Nazar's not one to be sidetracked. He tightened up the patrol schedules, reprimanded the sentries, and everyone moved on. But I couldn't stop thinking about it. None of us are careless out here, meaning someone left it open on purpose. And Larovic, well, he's always grumbling about officers. But on this, he was too quiet. And after the incident, he started acting different, jumpy. So when I spotted him sneaking out of the barracks after hours, I followed. I found him arguing with a stranger. And when Larovic mentioned the eclipse, I, I tried getting closer, but they hurt me. The stranger took off, and Lorvik lunged at me with his knife. Instincts took over. Sentries heard the scuffle and found me standing over his body. Why don't you believe him? We combed the woods, searched Lorvik's bunk, searched it again, didn't find anything. Look, Conover's a good man. I don't believe he murdered Larovic in cold blood. But Nazar only listens to facts. And that fact is, Conover killed his fellow sentry. He doesn't deny it, right? No, but more eclipses are out there. And considering there's no evidence backing up this eclipse story, well, we can't question a dead man. Okay. Nazar's on edge with the upcoming embassy and doesn't want distractions. But hey, if you find a bunch of eclipse soldiers hatching an evil plot in the woods, Please do let us know. <laughs> I'll keep an eye out. The meeting you witnessed. Did you hear anything else about their plans? No. But the clearing where they met is just east of here, across the river. A dozen soldiers have already searched at Conover. There's nothing there. I can see things others can't. If the Eclipse are in the Daunt, I'll find them. Thank you, Aloy. Sun bless your search. Don't get your hopes up, soldier. Okay, Shadow from the Past. Side quest. Go to the clearing. That sounds really interesting to me. Ah, uh, yeah, it's gonna send us back. Are we gonna get, are we gonna even see the embassy today? Probably not. It's not that far away. There's an unknown over there, way over there. All right, well, it looks like we've got another quest over here somewhere. Well, that was interesting. Political intrigue. What's up here? No one is allowed past this point. Commander ah. knows our orders. But I'm the savior. I save things, you know. Savior. Oi. <laughs> what? Mind if I do. By the sun, it's the savior. By the sun, it's me. Ouch! Hey, be careful. I heard someone. Eyes up here, brother. Sun, what your God, I get stuck on absolutely everything. Stay safe and come back soon. No, I was trying to get down. Thank you. Can't get it, it's trapped. Oh, it's all under water. Right. Clearing shouldn't be too far. I saw a question mark, didn't I? Maybe that's what the stash was. Yeah. New merchant. 
Slicing Shredder Gauntlet. Ooh. A Karja weapon that uses tear ammo to slice enemies. Hold the weapon drawn before firing to tear into enemies longer. Each catch charges the shredder and increases its damage. All right, I need a leap, a leap lasher circulator for that. Wow, something is very loud. What is so loud? Okay, trusty steed. Let's go that way. Cross the bridge, and it's right over there. Near to a campfire we have yet to discover. This must be the clearing where Conover says he saw the eclipse. Bloodstains. It's as good a place to start as any. This is where Conover killed that guard. Maybe my focus can tell me if there really was a third person here. Well, I tried that, but I guess it didn't work because I didn't uh, oh. activate it first. I see plenty of tracks from the car to search party. Not helpful. And branches. Was someone up here? Faint tracks leading away from barren light. I should be able to follow them with my focus. Let's see where this leads. Maybe Conover wasn't lying after all. Let's see where this leads. Oh man, it leads right past a bunch of machines. Lost the trail. There's too many machines walking around. Maybe I can pick up the tracks once I'm past them. Exploring cauldrons might teach me how to override these things. Do I go up or do I go down that way?
a lot of it. Aha! Well, that's an ancient valuable part. Whoever the runner was, this machine must have slashed him. Should be easy to follow the blood trail with my focus. Looks like we're headed for that bridge. Okay, I think we're through. The runner tried to treat their wounds before they went on. I should be able to follow their tracks. Where did you go off to? Off this way. We could go up. Go the slow Let me way. Try my focus. Traylon's here. Must have climbed up to that cave. With that injury, I'll bet he's on his last legs. Ah. Ah. interested in this. Up, up, up. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hey, it's an old parking garage. This looks like a good place for someone to hide. Metal eye. <laughs> Getting all the good stuff up here. Ancient black bracelet. three metal shards that brings me up to 530. I should probably start selling these valuable things that I've got.
We don't know Larvik's dead. He hasn't shown at the rendezvous point. So either that fool guard killed him, or he lost his nerve. We'll just have to blast our way through the gates. And then what? Rayad was our only link to Vezra, and now he's dead too. We'll track Vezra if we have to. But first we have to get past Baron Light. Next change of guard we go in fast and loud. Connemar is right. I have to stop them before they hurt anyone else. Uh-oh. Time to engage. Revezra! Whoa! Keep their heads to I'm sure there's more of them outside. I better be careful. Okay, not bad. I like my bow. I'll have to search. I'm ready. Let me loot first. Does everybody wait outside patiently for me? I will be there. So, start looking for her. Over there! Go! Go! Huh? Oh. Firing! She's hurt! better. Sounds like there's more Eclipse beyond the Daunt. If this Rayad was their only link to them, he might have a focus. It could tell me where they are. Okay. And I didn't die! Yay! No death. Darkened Sun. We are the Eclipse, elite of the Shadow Karja. We did as Hades, the buried shadow, commanded. We followed the prophecy that High Priest Bavas foretold. We wore the relics of the Old Ones, allowing us to share whispers across the Sundom. We raised an army of ancient machines to lay siege to the traitors who had stolen our holy city of Meridian. All for naught! The accursed Nora Huntress slew our leaders and brought the buried shadow low. What are the faithful to do when prophecy fails them? But perhaps it has not. Bava spoke of a cosmic cycle cut short by the murder of the true Sun King, Jaran. 
the world cast in shadow, the wheel of time broken, an unending day under a darkened sun. What if this period of prophecy is not yet complete? What if the buried shadow was not a deliverer, but only a harbinger? If this is true, our mission hasn't ended. It has barely begun. And it could very well be that the West, land of the setting sun, is where true power lies. Steel 101 says, Howdy Ox, I'm still training on the boat. I have one more day of training. They're teaching me how to throw and tie lines. Man, that rope is heavy. Well, it sounds like you're having a great time. At least it sounds like a great time to me. I'm glad you're learning all sorts of new things and that you're able to stop by to say hi from time to time. Okay, I think I got all the loot. Did I? Some stuff outside. Oh. I'm guessing that's Rayad. Blood trail must have been his. He bled out trying to get here. Right. Ryad has a focus. Loyal Eclipse. If you're seeing this, it means you've left the Sundom in search of something to follow. Your journey is almost over. Follow the sun beyond the gates of barren light. And bask in the gloom of future conquest. A new empire awaits. I'll have to pay this Vesera a visit and crush his new Eclipse empire before it begins. There's coordinates here, out past barren light. Ryad's mask should be enough to prove Conover's innocence. I better take it back to Baron Light. Okay. Well, before we go searching for these guys, we should uh, probably rescue rescue our friend. Rinsler says, Ox, hope you're doing well. If you could play one role in the new Fallout series, what would it be? Amazon, make it happen. When we fought the Eclipse back in Meridian, I thought that'd be the end of it. Guess I was wrong. Oh, I think it would be fun playing like a, a radio DJ. A soothing, calming voice on the radio. That'd be fun. Let's head back.
Fast travel lock, says Nick. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that I can do that. There's errand. Looks like he's had a few. Look alive, soldier. She's back. Aloy! Did you find anything? Eclipse fugitives were camped out on the other side of the forest. And they were getting ready to fight their way through Baron Light. You just helped save a lot of lives. Aloy, you know I believe you. But Nozar? He might not be convinced by your words alone. If he needs proof, show him that. And tell him the man he's got locked up risked his life to expose and eliminate an Eclipse spy. Huh. I guess you are his savior. Congratulations, soldier. You're a free man. I'll have you out of there before sunfall. I'll make sure this gets to Nozar. That's it, then. The end of the Eclipse. Almost. The trespassers you mentioned, the ones who got through Baron Light weeks ago, their leader is dangerous. And he's out there, in the Forbidden West, building up an army. Sun and Shadow, you're going out there to stop him, aren't you? I'm gonna try. I want to help. I can fight. I know you can. But you've been through a lot. Once you're out of that cell, you should enjoy your freedom. You've earned it. Take them out, Savior. <laughs> and there we go, Shadow from the Past. Steel 101 says, uh, also, I understand your concerns about Shady Sands' date, but I think you're worrying a bit too much. I think that chalkboard was intentionally vague. I don't think it was intentionally vague at all. I think it was explicitly clear. I mean, I, I you know, I, I understand where many uh, viewers are coming from because they don't want the show to have continuity errors, and I don't want the show to have continuity errors, but this is clearly a continuity error. Uh, many people in, in the comments of my video were saying that it was a flowchart, not a timeline, but it, it, it was a timeline. It was, it's called the timeline of history of the fall of Shady Sands, right? And it ends at a specific date, 2277. One thing I didn't mention in the video that I should have, but I'm going to bring up in a, in a different video, is that uh, at the end of that episode, they've got this slow zoom out sequence where you start inside... Uh, public, a public library in Shady Sands, and it, it shows you uh, a book open, and there's a little tag on the inside with checkout dates. And it goes all the way back to like 2241 and beyond, and the book is checked out almost every year. The last year the book was checked out was 2276. If as many people were theorizing, Shady Sands didn't really fall in 2277 as the chalkboard suggests and it really you know lingered on for many years after that to explain why the ncr was in new vegas in 2281 then why wasn't that book checked out any year after 2276 the only explanation or the best explanation is that it couldn't be checked out because shady sands fell in 2277 just like the chalkboard says so i feel it's becoming more complicated to try to invent a scenario where the show isn't telling us that the NCR was destroyed in 2277 rather than to admit that that's what the show is trying to tell us and very explicitly so. All right, new side quest, Shadow in the West. Go to the Eclipse hideout coordinates. That's gonna be beyond here. So we'll go back up to main quest, the embassy. Here we go. Lighten up, Pai. You've got a thick wall of stone between you and the Tanakh out there. Yes, sir. Why the long face, Mavas? Wish you were heading out there? No, sir. Don't worry. If the Tanakh were planning to invade, they'd have done so already. If you say so, sir. Are you in charge around here? Ah, apologies, no. That would be Commander Nozar. I'm Lawan, the second in command. So, 
What brings Aloy of the Nora to Baron Light? I'm here for the embassy. I need it to happen so I can head west. And maybe now that Studius Wadis is here, we can finally get things underway. Ah, <laughs> yes, the Sun Priest. Walked in practically kicking and screaming behind his escort. Really seems to like his scrolls. But the embassy remains delayed. Commander Nozar has signaled our readiness, but the Tanakh Marshals have yet to sound their horn. All right, fine. Let me through the gates then. I have my own business with them. I'm sure you do, but I'm afraid I can't. Commander's orders. Normally, the gates are open for any who dare to venture out. Asaram salvagers, a few especially brazen Karja, but no one's allowed in or out before an embassy. Now we're open. Once the Tanakh have left. Deathica says Ox. There's another quest in Northwest Daunt. Oh, really? So what happens at these embassies, exactly? Mostly trade and negotiation. The Karja offer tribute of food, spices, and gear. In exchange, the Tanakh return personal effects taken from Karja soldiers that fell during the Red Raids. This particular embassy, however, is a special case. Because the Tanakh are handing over some sort of prisoner, right? A soldier named Fashav? Ah, so you've heard. The exchange has got everyone on edge. You never know if an embassy's going to go well until it's practically over. You said something about Tanakh Marshals. Who are they? They're the tribe's elite warriors. Before every embassy, they arrive with a contingent of soldiers from each of their three clans. Then, during the proceedings, they negotiate on behalf of their leader. And by negotiate, I mean stare down our sun priest until they concede. Paiv over here came face to face with them for the first time at the last embassy. <laughs> came back drenched in his own sweat. It was hot that day, sir. <laughs> it was indeed. <laughs> Where is this Commander Nozar, then? If he's the one keeping the gates shut, I'll convince him to open them for me. I'll take you to him, but I have to warn you. The Commander isn't one to break protocol, especially when he's already high-strung. We'll see about that. This way. There's a lot of activity going on around here. The Tanakh tore down this place during the Red Raids. Two years of labor, and we still have a long way to go. The work stoppage and chain scrape nearly halted our rebuilding efforts. But I hear a certain Nora got them back to work. I was just helping out. Yes, well, I'm sure Olvind was thrilled. Stand aside, soldier. Sir? Why walk so slow? There's the commander. Oh. Better brace oh, yourself. Hi. And good luck. How are we to hold an embassy with a tribe that can't even govern their own people? What more can you expect from barbarians? Ahem. <clears throat> Oh. <laughs> Aloy, was it? Yes. <laughs> the one who cleared the valley for you? That Aloy. <laughs> we appreciate your service. At least we are ready for the embassy to begin. Didn't you just give the signal? Both sides must signal readiness. Until the Tanakh sound their horn, we wait. Oh, Yea, for as the first shall be good. Shut up. Why the delay? <laughs> The Tanakh are a tribe composed of three clans. How many banners do you see? You're just gonna wait? Go find out what's wrong. <sighs> oh, this isn't some forgotten corner of the East where you come from, Dora. It's the Forbidden West. If you don't like it, run back to Meridian, file a complaint. The Meridian I saved, you mean? That's right. Nobody walks to the gate until the third clan arrives and the Tanakh horn has sounded. Not even the savior of Meridian. Wow. 
Our choices, I'll wait or I'm going now. <laughs> Silestra Eversong says, I don't like how they added religion to the Brotherhood of Steel. Why do they now have altars of worship, clerics, and Catholic adjacent rituals? Thoughts? Well, I plan to make a video where I, I briefly talk about this, but um, my thinking on it is, first of all, they have been divorced from the East Coast chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel for many, many years. So the culture that we're familiar with, with the Brotherhood on the East Coast, isn't necessarily going to be adopted by the uh, culture of the West Coast uh, Brotherhood. Additionally, uh, in the last episode, we heard the Elder talk about wanting to forge a new brotherhood, which makes me think that his little chapter might not even be uh, walking in stride with the other West Coast elders. He might be trying to do something new on his own. And lastly, we already know that the brotherhood is trying to model themselves off of what they perceive to be some sort of quasi brotherhood of knights and scribes rooted in ancient mankind's history. I get the impression that they're not really educated about mankind's history. They probably just cracked open a book of, you know, King Arthur or their Sir Gawain and the Green Knight or uh, Le Morte d'Arthur or something like that. Saw a bunch of stuff and go, oh yeah, knights and shields and scribe. That sounds cool. They might not really know what all of that stuff means. So I think it's entirely possible that they saw a little bit of Latin in a book or maybe saw... Uh, medieval paintings of Christians with censers swinging back and forth and thought, oh, that looks medieval too, and incorporated it into their rituals without understanding the Christian backtext behind it. So I don't think we need to necessarily assume that they've suddenly become religious, at least not religious in the way that we would be familiar with. I think that they've sort of uh, just adopted their own unique culture that's different from the unique culture and many of the other disparate brotherhood factions that are out there. Man, I should uh, write this stuff down before I... See, what happens is, that, is I'll answer a question and I'll rant for a little bit and then I'll forget what I said so that when I sit down to do my lore video, I'll, I'll miss what I was talking about. Anyway, uh, what am I, I'm making a choice here. Am I, am I going beyond the wall or am I gonna wait? Um, I'm gonna go. Well, thanks, but I've waited long enough. It's time to go. Absolutely not. This embassy depends on diligent adherence to... You shall not! Keep telling yourself that. Someone approaching! On a machine! Open the gates, please. Do not let her through that gate! That is a direct order! Sorry, can't do it. Sir, it's the Savior! I don't care if it's the Dowager Queen herself! The gate is made shield until that torn throat! I'm asking nicely. I, I don't know what to do. Hey, Varl! Hi, Aaron. Uh... What's Orders happening? Are I ain't on the usual. Aloy wants something. People Open try to stand in her way. It's not gonna work. <laughs> That's it. Arrest her. I'd like to see you try. Supporting fire? Yeah, I'm locked and loaded. Hey, Nozar! You stupid bastard. You think you got the authority to keep that door shut in the savior of Meridian's face? What, what do you think Sun King Avad is gonna do when he hears what you did? Promote you, huh? Let it through, boys. All right. Saving the world. There you go. Hey, all it took was a little errand. Forget something back in Meridian? Look, Burl. It doesn't matter. Made it just in time. Poor Aaron. He's got to be like a white squirrel. So this tribe that Murad told us about, the Tanakh, we need their permission to go west? 
Yeah, well, I figured it'd be nice if they weren't trying to kill me the whole time. But this embassy hasn't started yet. We're just gonna barge in? It's no more politics. No more delays. Oh, well. Now at least you have some backup. I guess I do. We'll see how it goes. Steel 101 says, yeah, I see your point, but still I don't want to jump to conclusions this early. I just want to wait until we see tease season two. I think we'll see more info. No, and, and you're absolutely right. Uh, it's really it's really unwise to jump to conclusions yet uh, because they could explain so many things that we perceive to be plot holes in a second season. And, and I'm going to be covering all of the plot holes, and there are quite a few that I've been thinking about besides what I've already talked about. Um, in, in subsequent videos, but I, uh, I think it's important that we all realize and that we stress that what we may think are plot holes might not necessarily be, as they're expounded upon in Season 2. We won't really know what's a plot hole and what isn't until it's over, and then we can go back through everything and go, oh yeah, they never explained this, or they never explained that. But it's also important to be aware of them and talk about them now. As for the date thing... One of the reasons I've been so frustrated by that is because I can't think of any way for them to salvage that. I mean, unless, I mean, they would have to come out with something else that said, oh, yeah, by, by fall, uh, we actually meant decline. Uh, uh, we, we just wrote the wrong word because decline is very different from fall. If Shady Sands fell in 2277, it fell. Falling takes a short amount of time. No one falls slowly. We all fall quickly. Decline takes slowly. It, takes, it happens slowly. It takes time. And if that's what really happened, then that's the word they should have used instead of fall. Oh. Hello. Got popcorn. That is the line between East and West. Cross it and die. Hold on now. Let's take it easy. None may walk this valley until our signal sounds. That was our accord with the Karja. I'm not Karja. I came here on my own to ask for rite of passage. But they opened the gate for you, did they not? What is the meaning of this violation? Why send a child? Do they want to parley or not? The Karja can't be trusted. This is no. Forget the Karja. This has nothing to do with them. I need to go west to save lives. Maybe even yours. The only lives you can save are your own. By turning back. Now. Hold! She's telling the truth about one thing. She's not Karja. She's a Nora from the Savage East. And if she seeks to save lives, should we not listen? Let me speak to her. One last favor for a fellow marshal before he's taken away. A fearless, red-headed Nora. You must be the so-called savior of Meridian. Just Aloy. I am unyielding Fashav. Once of the Karja High Command, last of the Army of the Setting Sun. You're Fashav. Vavad gave me a message for you. That he waits for you in Meridian, where you belong. Hmm. <laughs> Avad always was polite. Well, now I'm even more curious about you knowing that you have the confidence of the Sun King. But such an association with the Karja could work against you here as it often has with me, as you can see. Tensions are high. This embassy is a delicate affair. They're about to return me to the Sundom, a gesture that might help soothe painful grievances. And now you arrive, unheralded. I'm not here to cause trouble. I just need to go west. So you say. I might be able to help. But I need to know why. Along with some assurance that I won't regret it. 
Hmm. I've never seen markings like those on a Karja before. The Karja see ink is decoration. For the Tanakh, it is much more. A litany of deeds. A record of vanquished enemies. Looks like you've vanquished quite a few. I've fought my share of battles. But I feel that my life, like my markings, is only half complete. This side shows my martial deeds. Before I die, I'd like to see the other half marked with the laurels of peace. How did you come to be among the Tanakh? It's quite a story, but not a quick one. We got time. Though I suppose neither of us is going anywhere before the embassy begins. Are you sure you want to hear it? <laughs> well, chat, uh, do we, we want to hear it? Yeah, we're here for the lore. Tell me. I guess we have time. Very well. I marched with Sun King Jaron's raiders when they came west, hoping to moderate their worst impulses. I failed, of course. They committed unspeakable atrocities, stirring the Tanakh into action. When the clans overran our forward encampment at Cinnabar Sands, I stayed behind to help the last stragglers evacuate, and was taken prisoner. I didn't make it easy for my captors, mind you. And they paid me back in kind on the journey to their capital. I'd lost so much blood on the way that I was white as a corpse when they threw me before Chief Akaro. I thought I was dead for sure, so I resorted to desperate measures. So when you met the Tanakh Chief, you did something desperate? Now, I'd kept my ears open as the Tanakh dragged me along, and I heard mutterings about a kind of trial by combat that they revere. So, when they flung me at Hikaru's feet, I demanded this rite, called the Kurut, thinking that by winning I could request a boon, my life or even my freedom. The other Tanakh howled, but Hikaru stared them down, and then his gaze fell upon me. Evidently, he appreciated my ingenuity. He allowed me to participate in the cool route. Little did I know what I was in for. Oh, that's enough for now. No, wait, what was the, what happened to the cool route? You said the cool route is a Tanakh trial by combat. Yes, but it is no ordinary trial. It doesn't pit men against each other, at least not directly. Instead, the combatants fight machines in a great arena, and only the strongest survive. Believe me, it is no easy thing to stare down a charging machine while hundreds around you scream for blood. I know more about that than you might think. Do you? Well, then you have my respect. Like you, I lived through it to claim my prize. I had hopes for freedom, but... Well, that wasn't on offer. Only service to the Chief. You wound up serving the Tanakh Chief? The winners of the Kul Root must serve the Chief as his marshals. You mentioned that word before. What does it mean? Well, the word itself refers to a kind of protective spirit from the ancient past. In practice, marshals are Hikaru's roving lawgivers. Part magistrate, part judge, part executioner. I won my place among their ranks and served as honor demanded, but many Tanakh still spat on the ground when I walked by. But they did, until I started forcing them to the ground to grind their faces in it. I guess that's one way to deal with it. As you may have noticed, violence is the native tongue of the Tanakh. To survive, one must master it. <laughs> the truth is, though, Great the cars just speak it too. More than they should. I can't blame the Tanakh for hating them. So then, are you still Karja? Part of me, yes. Always. Yet there is much to admire about the Tanakh, especially their chief. I've heard stories about what it was like before his reign. Three clans always at war, constantly slitting each other's throats. Hikaru and the marshals have crafted a delicate peace. And now he looks to the future. Who knows? Maybe that future will include cooperation with the Karja. The Karja talk about Hikaru as if he's a monster. 
The Karja feel compelled to demonize him if only because he swept them from the field. It is true that he is fearsome. When I was first taken before him, I thought he would flay me alive. But he is no bloodthirsty tyrant like the Mad Sun King was. I think that if you were fortunate enough to meet him, as I was, we will you would be. find that he only wants the best for his people. I hope you do speak to him. I'm sure you'd interest him. So, that's my story. You're the first Easterner to hear it, but not the last. The Karja need to know what I have learned. Yeah. The way you talk about the Tanakh is a lot different than how they do. Are you glad to be going back to Meridian? Oh, I'll admit that I wouldn't mind sleeping in a feather bed or sipping wine from the southern vineyards. But I have another goal in mind. As someone who knows the Tanakh and the Karja, I'm in a unique position to advocate for both. If Sun King Avad is amenable, my hope is to establish a lasting peace. The Tanakhs don't seem that peaceful. They're not, as a rule. But these are difficult times. Chief Akaro knows that survival often requires change, even if that change means putting aside centuries of war. You asked why I need rite of passage. I'll tell you, but you won't like my answer. Six months ago, the world almost ended in Meridian. That threat still exists. It's getting worse every day, much worse. Calling down storms, poisoning the water, enraging the machines. The source of it all has gone west, and I'm the only one who can stop it. I've seen the signs. And I've heard tales of incredible occurrences in Meridian, an army of demons vanquished by a red-haired champion. So I'm inclined to believe you. The burden of your task is written across your face clearer than any mark of mine. I'll grant you this, to serve as proof of your right to travel into Tanakh lands. A task so important, and it's just the two of you. Take it from one who aspires to be a diplomat. Allies are essential. Chief Akaro knows the West better than anyone. He may be able to help you. He can be intimidating to others, but don't let that deceive you. He is a man of his word. Maybe. If I need him. Your choice. We will. You can find him at his palace, past the mountains to the southwest. Tell him I sent you. And he'll listen to Look! Me. The Sky Clan's banner! Marshals. It wasn't easy, but I brought the Sky Clan with me. And the commander? Ah, uh, no. I could only convince a few. He isn't yet aware we left. We have banners from all three clans. If there are fewer from the Sky Clan, it can't be helped. He's right. Sound the horn. What's going on? Not all Tanakh can stomach the idea of parley with the Kaja. But enough have come for us to begin. Then I'll be on my way. No. The other marshals will not permit it. You wanted safe passage, you have it. After the embassy. Okay. We gotta go through the embassy first. <laughs> the Karja have opened the gates. Scared. Confidence. Exude it. As the sun rises over a land at war, so too can it set over a land at peace. Today is such. Hear me, 
marshals! You who claim to be Tanakh! Uh-oh. Regala. Chief Akaro's biggest mistake. A rival whom he should have killed. You have forgotten that our people were born in blood. The blood of the Karja. Instead, you pledge your spears to a chief who conspires with the enemy. Hikaru has betrayed us! The embassy is proof! And all of you marshals are his accomplices! For this, I condemn you to death! Oh, you only more than toothless threats to intimidate us! Exile! Lancers! Form up! More than one? Oh, no! Oh, God! Oh, man, why? They're riding machines! Where'd they learn to do that? Silence. Vashav! Come with us now, or not at all! Archers! Light them up! says, I noticed something. They showed Repcon's female CEO at the meeting. Why would Repcon be there? Didn't Robco buy them out? Oh my god, you noticed it. Also, Repcon never had a woman CEO before or after their sales to Robco. Did they retcon Repcon? I don't know about the woman CEO thing. Uh, first of all, we don't even know if she was a CEO. She was there representing Repcon. Uh, the fact that she's a woman, I think, is irrelevant. I don't think that matters at all. But Repcon was owned by Robco. You are right about that. Repcon was a subsidiary of Robco. So why would Repcon be there when Robco was already there? Now that is a good question. And I don't have an answer. 
Um, I don't necessarily think it's a big lore breaking deal. I'm sure they could explain it away, though I don't know if it's even important enough for them to want to explain it away, but it is a question. Steel 101 says, I'm not surprised, Vault. Uh, <laughs> listen, I know there are some people. I mean, it's, it's been several days. I don't know how long I need to refrain from uh, uh, issuing spoilers and all of that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try and avoid end of series spoilers the best I can. Okay, well, let's 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 do this, I guess. Stick to cover! Archers on the ridge! Here they come! Get eyes on her!
Enough! You, Outlanders, I'll skin you both! Chief, grant me the honor of this challenge. Granted. Outcraft! Shield like that. Better scan it. I can break through a shield if I damage it enough. Generated. Challenge. You've earned your life today. Comrades! Mark this day! Today you have decimated the marshals! Slaughtered the Karja! So begins our war on Hikaru. Yeah! Move out! Matthew Merrill says, I highly recommend staying with the main quest for the first couple of missions when the embassy is over. Okay, Matthew. Uh, get him to the camp. Now. You gonna make it? You're going on without me, aren't you? Because I'm stuck with Aaron. <laughs> For now. Come on. I'll take you back to the fort.
I got you. It's salvage time, boys. <laughs> but the officer I'm a good at. I don't think it can take a hit. I should be able to use it to glide. Aloy, we're still trying to sort out this mess. Seems like the Tanakh have a civil war in their hands. That sounds about right. The marshals weren't expecting Regala to attack. And the entire Karja delegation was slain. Nozar, Vwadis, Peshav, a massacre. What will you do now? I have to head west. Hopefully this rite of passage is still good. For what I'm after, I'll cross all of Tanakh territory if I have to. Then you have a long road ahead of you. This is only the threshold of the Forbidden West. The Tanakh's true domain lies over the mountains that border Plainsong, home of the Utaru tribe. This isn't Tanakh's territory? All that out there? That's no man's land. It was supposed to be neutral ground, Though, obviously, this Regala ignored that. Her rebels approached from the north, with all those machines they were riding. They must have made camp up that way. The rebels were riding bristlebacks. And there were bristlebacks in the Daunt. Are you saying the rebels let them into the Daunt? How would that even be possible? I don't know. But it's worth looking into. While you're at it, there were a number of Karja and Asuram who went out there before the gates were shut for the embassy. Maybe you could check in on them. See if they're all right. I can keep an eye out. Is there a tall neck somewhere nearby? A tall neck? There's that one, over there, near the Utara border. But why... It's, uh... It's hard to explain. It'll help me get the lay of the land. If you say so. Is there anything else I can tell you before you go? Random Greymane says that I missed his super chat. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, there we go. He says, I think I shall now call this the Shady Sands power armor argument. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I'll stick to my guns on this one. I really don't think that uh, that there's an easy... Uh, the, the problem with the date is that um, so many people are using non-canonical means to explain it away. Even the people who are editing the wiki are saying that Shady Sands fell between 2277 and uh, 2282, where there's there's nothing in the lore that says that. There's nothing that says that it fell over that long period of time. Um, and I think that it's a bit of a mistake for us to, to assume an answer to the gaps in the lore instead of relying upon the lore itself to tell us where it's supposed to go. I have a feeling that's gonna change in the future. <clears throat> Oh, we've got lots of questions about the West. Okay. You said the Tanakh lands are far to the West. What can I expect to find between here and there? Well, as I mentioned, you've got a stretch of wilderness known as No Man's Land, and then New Taru farmlands. Past that are the Tanakh. Their territory is split into three clans. Desert, Lowland, and Sky. Right. I saw their banners at the embassy. The Desert Clan is closest. Ooh. Vicious lot. Where everyone else sees an inhospitable wasteland, they see a challenge to dominate. Somewhere beyond the desert is the tribe's capital and the territories of the other two clans. You don't sound certain. I've only heard the stories. During the Red Raids, the Karja army tried to push into Tanakh territory, but the United Clans rose up against them, forced them all the way back to the Daunt. 
So no one except the Tanakh really know what's beyond the desert. <laughs> Maybe the scholars do, back in Meridian. All those scrolls have to be filled with something, right? You mentioned the Utara tribe. Their lands are between here and the Tanakh further west? That's right. Plainsong is their home. They're a peaceful bunch, at least compared to the Tanakh. More taken to farming than fighting. It's hard to imagine a bunch of farmers surviving in the Forbidden West. Make no mistake, they have a fierceness all their own. When the Karja were pushed back during the Red Raids, their warriors chased ours through the burning fields of Plainsong. The Sun King has made several overtures of peace to them as well, but so far, they've declined. If they're so peaceful, why decline? Don't know. I heard they have their own troubles to deal with. Something about a food shortage. You'd think that'd make them open to trade, but... No. They just want to be left alone. This area is no man's land. That it is. The Tanakh used to attack anyone past Baron Light on sight, but after Avad overthrew the Mad Sun King, he reached out to the other tribes to offer reconciliation. The Tanakh agreed to a neutral border zone as part of the peace talks. Karja and Asaram have been striking out into the area ever since. But now, it seems like Regala and her rebel army have moved in. Well, I'd never call No Man's Land safe, even in the best of times. The ancient ruins of the Southwest are a testament to that. Remnants of some forgotten war. You said there were others who went out when the gates were open before. Like who? Well, in addition to the salvagers that just went through, there were a couple of other parties of Asarum Delvers. Even saw two Karja scholars trekking southwest with an Asarum crew. Not sure if they're exceptionally brave or just foolhardy. Fashav called Regala a rival. Someone that Tanakh's chief should have killed. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he should have. She's obviously a huge threat. Her attack was coordinated and precise. Until you got in her way, that is. They knew the lay of the land. And they knew Fashav was going to be handed over at the embassy. If the Tanakh weren't expecting her, she must have spent months gathering an army in secret. They had to have made camp nearby. Somewhere they could lie low until the perfect moment to strike. About Fashav. <sighs> the man was taken captive by the Tanakh. Survived for years out in the West, only to die just short of the Sundom. It's a cruel end for a good soldier. There was more he wanted to do. He spoke of advocating for lasting peace between the Karja and Tanakh. Too late for that now. What will happen to him? His body will be carried back to Meridian. As a cousin of the Sun King, he will be accorded official rights and buried with honor. No soldier could ask for more. It's too bad about Nazar and Vladis. At least Nozar went down fighting. As for the Sun Priest, well, no one deserves to go out that way. I'll make sure they're given proper funeral rites. It's the least I can do. Do you think the Karja will take action against Regala? Seems like you'd have common ground with the Tanakh. An expedition of the Karja army into the west could be taken as the start of another invasion. Sun King Avad won't risk it. That said, we can't allow ourselves to be caught unaware by an attack like that again. I need to be on my way. Then I wish you luck. The gates will always be open to you should you wish to return. And don't worry about your friends. We'll get them patched up. I appreciate it. Sun, watch over you, Aloy. I hope you find what you're looking for. All right. Quest complete. Time to loot. Hey, they said enough. So there's a tall. Ooh. 
The shield wing is an energy-based glider repurposed from machine tech. Uh, oh, that flew off the screen before I could read it. I'm assuming it works like every other parachute in every game. I can't jump. Why can't I jump? Use of this. So, yeah. This is the Forbidden West. A whole new frontier to explore. The coordinates from the spire should lead to silence in Hades. And just maybe a backup of Gaia. It won't be easy out there. The blight, the storms, Regal's machine riders. But I'll have to push through it all. Find a way to fix the world. Like Elizabeth would. Dethika says Fashav was such a great character. Why? Yeah, I know. I'm really curious about him. Ambush, Regala. Had a lot of machines under her command. There's only one other person who has that kind of knowledge. Silence. But what's his angle? Why help to knock the rebels? He was a really interesting character. I feel bad that he didn't get to uh, fulfill his dream of uh, advocating for peace to cover the other side of his body with tattoos of diplomacy instead of war. Tragic end. But perhaps we can achieve his dream in another way. Okay. Well. I've got lore videos to do, and I said at the beginning of this broadcast I was probably going to make it a little bit shorter. I didn't know if I'd be able Good to do Good spot to test the shield wing. I climb down, I can glide. I'm going to save here. Take a look at my map real quick. I've got a totem sitting up here. It wasn't removed from the fight. Where's that tall neck that he spoke of? You guys see it off on the horizon? There it is, wandering around, yeah. That's a tall neck. Oh, <laughs> we've got a fog of war over here. Okay, so there's the tall neck. So, I need to go there first. Ooh, we've got a side quest here, what? Oh, that's the quest that I missed, that Deathaga was telling me about earlier. Okay, unknown rebel camp, that's, are those the guys that attacked? The bristlebacks. Okay, so no, that's where I need to go. Uh, to search for the rebel camp. Go to Kuru Salvage Unlimited. That's where they're setting up shop. Shadows in the West. Go to the Eclipse Hideout coordinates. Chad was saying that I need to go here first. That I should focus on the primary quest. I'm kind of tempted to go snoop out these nearby rebels. Since they are so close. To get any more clues about that. Is that going to break the story for me if I do that? And these are the coordinates recovered from the spire, Death's Door. It's going to be very hard for me to focus on the main quest. <laughs> to be honest, I'm going to want to go through all of this. All right. Well, that's the tall neck in Cinnabar Sands. Albin Forsberg says, congrats, Ox. You finished the tutorial section of the game. Also, try using more heavy attacks in your melee chain attacks. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yep, I need to, to get better at all that. There's a lot that I need to get better at doing. Using my full toolkit, for example. There we go. At least I've got all my ammunition crafted. Right. Let's do a manual save here. And that's going to be it for today. We had a good solid three hours of broadcasting. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. 
I'm going to be working really hard on my lore videos all this week, trying to get done as much as humanly possible. Uh, and then for Wednesday, I still plan to do my stream of Baldur's Gate. That's the plan for now. I'll let you know on Twitter if that changes, and it might based on my content production schedule. But the plan for now is to continue with Wednesday's broadcast. But I'll definitely be doing Thursday's broadcast, Scotch and Smoke Rings, at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And I hope to see you all there. Thanks a bunch for joining me, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday, and I'll see you soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.